Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this webinar from the Municipal Climate Change Action Centre. I'm Stephanie Ripley, and I am the project coordinator for the renewables team at the Municipal Climate Change Action Centre, and I help administer the Solar for Schools program. Uh, we're all, I'm also delighted to be joined today by both Olena Olafsson and Sanjeev Sharma from the Calgary Board of Education, uh, who are going to tell us a little bit about their solar initiatives that they have implemented on a whole schools. So without further ado, and uh, I'd just like to start by acknowledging that this presentation is being delivered from both Treaty 6 and 7 territories in Alberta and hopefully received across the province in, in Treaty 6, 7 and 8. Uh, we would like to respectfully acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries and whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant communities. So today, we're the quick run through of what we're going to be seeing. Um, about the Action Centre, I'll do a little bit of an introduction as to who we are and, and what we offer, uh, and then jump into why installing solar PV on schools makes sense. Uh, and then we'll get into the Solar for Schools funding program that we offer through the Action Centre. And then I'll pass it over to Elena and Sanjeev to talk a bit about the Calgary Board of Education initiatives and how they've managed to do what they've done with solar on their schools. And at the very end, we'll have a Q&A session. So uh, if you have questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them in the chat box or in the Q&A box, pardon me. Uh, I will try and answer as many as I can as we go through if I'm not speaking <laughs> and if I have the answers and if not, we'll hold on to them till the end. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session. We'll try and have plenty of time for that. So uh, the Municipal Climate Change Action Centre was founded in 2009 as a collaborative initiative of the Alberta Urban Municipalities Association, Rural Municipalities of Alberta. So the two organizations that represent municipalities within the province and the government of Alberta. And there was uh, it was identified that there was a, a, a desire for municipalities to start taking action on climate change and they needed assistance to do that. So we provide uh, technical support, education and funding for municipalities and now schools as well through the Solar for Schools program uh, and, and some community related organizations depending on the program to take action on climate change through enacting uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. So we are recognized, we were very fortunate to win uh, an Emerald Award this year from the Alberta Emerald Foundation, uh, being recognized as a strong and positive provincial environmental leader and a trusted implementer and project manager that encourages healthy collaboration on projects. Uh, and uh, we, we pride ourselves on providing excellent client service while pursuing creative solutions to meet the needs of Alberta schools and municipalities. So a little bit about our impact over the last 10 years. Uh, we're very happy to have been working in this space for quite a long time. Um, we have, th have had 342 individual participants complete 615 projects. We've uh, catalyzed $57 million of clean energy investments, created a 511 full-time job equivalents, uh, installed to date 17 megawatts of solar PV through our programs. Uh, and there's more, more coming in every day. And uh, 455,990 tons of CO2 emissions lifetime uh, greenhouse gas emissions have been avoided through our, the, uh, the projects that we funded. So we're pretty proud of that track record. Um, solar PV is sort of a, a basic run through. We won't spend too much time on this. I feel like now this technology is, is well enough understood that most people understand, but uh, it's a renewable energy technology that converts uh, energy from the sun, so sunlight into solar or into electrical energy, so into electricity. And through our programs, what we fund typically through the Solar for Schools program in particular and through our Alberta, Alberta Municipal Solar Program are what we call micro generation projects in the province of Alberta. And so those projects are typically what you would see on a rooftop or sometimes they're ground mount as well, but they're connected behind an electricity meter, so an existing meter and they are designed to offset a an electrical load. So the, the electricity produced from the solar array first goes to the building or the, the load that it's connected to, whatever that is. And then from there, 
uh, whatever's excess. So if it's producing more electricity than what can be used in that moment, then the excess is exported to the grid and a credit is received on that the customer's electricity bill for the electricity that they export. And then at times, you know, in the winter when the days are shorter or if on, you have a, a cloudy day, if the solar PV system isn't producing as much electricity as what's being consumed, then because these systems are still grid connected, the power grid feeds electricity when the solar system isn't producing enough to meet the needs. So it works pretty well. It's kind of like the, the Alberta grid is acting like a battery in a way for the system. And it just makes it really, it's a really reliable way to, to produce solar. Uh, solar modules can be roof mounted, they can be on walls of buildings and building integrated, and they can also be installed on the ground. And, you know, I'm sure many people have seen the big the images of big solar farms, but even smaller systems can be put in ground mount. Um, solar itself is currently the most widespread and economically, or sorry, <laughs> it's, it currently employs more people worldwide, the solar PV industry, than the coal industry does. So it's it is really a, a proven technology that's taken off and there's there's a lot of there are a lot of jobs coming and already in place in this industry. Um, currently the most widespread and economically viable systems are the grid tied systems. So uh, battery operated systems are great if you have if you're really far away from the grid and you're you know you're looking at a standalone project that it's not possible to connect to the grid but um if you if you have a grid nearby by far the most economical way to to have a solar pv system is to grid tie it um all right, so why install solar PV on schools? There's a number of different reasons. They, the, uh, first and foremost, they provide an excellent hands-on real-time learning opportunity for STEAM learning in classrooms. Um, you know, the production from the solar PV array, there's often a dashboard that can be accessed online. So students can actually, students and teachers can actually access real-time production and, and um, use that in their curriculum and in their classrooms for we've seen it happen from various schools through math assignments and science assignments and you know what teachers come up with some really creative ways to what's being produced on their roof into their classrooms so it's a really great way for students to learn about renewable energy but also a number of other things uh, they help reduce electricity costs so because they you're producing your own electricity on the School off extra is being exported in credit. So it reduces the electricity costs for those schools. It reduces greenhouse gas emissions. In Alberta, in particular, our electricity grid is quite carbon intensive because most of our electricity is produced from coal and natural gas sources. And so any renewable electricity that we can produce on site helps to reduce emissions because we're not consuming electricity from our grid. It's also a proven technology. You know, this is it's been around since the 1950s. Uh, it's fully commercialized and scalable. It can we can have small systems and large systems, and and it's well known and well understood and easily deployed. So, it's um, it's a growing industry that has a lot of of well established companies that that are doing this work. So, it's uh, it's kind of a win 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 across the board for everyone if it gets installed on schools. And in Alberta in particular, we have a pretty big solar advantage. Um, you'll see on these maps on the right hand side here, uh, you see Canada as, and that's showing our solar resource. So basically our access to the sun and, and how sunny it is. And you'll notice that Alberta and Saskatchewan in particular are, have some of the best solar resource in Canada uh, when compared to Germany, which is uh, the other map that you see there, which is for their solar industry, they're one of the world for solar. We have better solar access here than they do. Um, Okotoks has a greater solar energy resource than Miami, Florida, despite 4,000 kilometers further south than us. So you would expect them perhaps to have more, but we actually have a better resource. Uh, and Edmonton's annual solar energy resource is 20% greater than Manchester, UK, despite being at the same latitude. So it gives you a sense that there's real opportunity here. Um, and even, you know, that we get a lot of questions about, well, what about the winter and the snow cover and that kind of thing? Does that does that not negate some of those benefits? And overall, we have longer days in the summer than a lot of other places. Um, we don't get as much cloud cover. Typically, we are, we're a pretty sunny province. 
Uh, and realistically, there have been some studies done um, at the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology in particular. They've done a, they did a study over the course of six years with a couple of arrays that were set up side by side on their roof at various different angles. And they, one, they clear the one that they, they did not. And so they actually have really good data from those six years uh, that indicates that the reduction in production from the winter time of the modules that weren't cleared was only about 4% overall, if you look at the, the year total. So not clearing, you know, having snow covered modules in the winter doesn't make a huge difference here, mostly because we have short days and they're not producing a huge amount in the winter anyway. Um, those micro generation systems are typically sized specifically so that they will produce, ideally you want to have them sized so they produce as much electricity over the course of the year as what's used over the course of the year. So in the summer they're producing more than what gets used at that time to offset in the winter when you're actually pulling more from the grid than what you use. So it's, uh, we yeah, there's, there is a real opportunity to, uh, to save some money uh, by producing your own electricity here. So getting into the Solar for Schools program, uh, we have funding available for schools. So uh, this is a rebate program offered by the MCCAC to encourage Alberta schools to install solar PV on their school buildings and to reduce their operating costs and environmental impact. So what we provide, uh, the schools that are eligible, um, they need to be on schools or the, the school, I guess, that, that's installing the solar needs to be owned by a school authority that serves grades K to 12. So it's it's not for post-secondary institutions or um, or some other other educational facilities. But if, it, if you're a K to 12 school that fits in the public charter separate or francophone category, then the, the, you would be eligible for this program. It, the systems can be installed on new or existing school facilities or land. And then the projects also have a component that needs to be fulfilled that the, the school or school authority needs to complete an educational component. So somehow relate the project back into the curriculum as we were talking about a bit later so that the students are benefit from these systems as well. Um, and then they need to be grid connected and compliant with the Alberta microgeneration regulations. So which I would say the vast majority of systems at this scale are 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 that anyway right now. There's not too many uh, folks that are going for battery systems. So uh, what's not eligible, uh, as you can see in this list here, um, private, provincial, federal or First Nations schools are not eligible. At the time this program was established, there were separate programs for those facilities and so they weren't included in this program. Um, and then there, there uh, previously there had been an offering from Alberta Education that was the Solar Technology Systems Initiative for new school builds. And so if a, if a, a solar system on a school has been funded by the STS program, then they wouldn't be eligible to receive funding from our program. But that program has now ended. So new schools coming up that are looking to install solar are eligible under our program. They can get up to 50% of their costs covered through our program for a solar PV array. And then, as mentioned, off-grid solar projects are not are not eligible either. Um, and just to to clarify, although the solar PV array gets installed on an individual school, it's actually the school authority that receives the rebate and signs the funding agreement with the action center. So that's just something to note if you're a teacher or if you're looking at an individual school working with your school authority about the, the project as well before you apply for the school program. So the we uh, we are our programs operate on a first come first serve basis, and we calculate our rebates on sort of a sliding scale. Now, this isn't intended to penalize the larger projects, as you can see. The the per watt rebates that we offer based on system size are higher for the smaller projects and lower for the larger projects. That is simply to reflect the economies of scale that happen with larger projects. Typically, you know, as projects get larger in size, that dollar per watt cost for the system goes down. And so our rebates are are, are structured to reflect that. So anything less than 10 kilowatts, so you know, something that would be equivalent to a, a residential system, a smaller system is a dollar fifty per watt. And then it goes all the way up to or all the way down, I guess, to a dollar per watt for your two megawatt to five megawatt systems. I don't think we've seen a system of that size come through to date. In and I don't think any of our programs, we've seen a couple of almost one megawatt or, or just over a megawatt systems come through. But um, so the 
School authorities can access up to a maximum of $3 million in incentives per school authority, of which 1.5 million can be used for new construction projects. So there is, there are a couple of caps there, total of $3 million per school authority, and then a $1.5 million cap for new construction projects. And then the rebates won't exceed 50% of eligible expenses. So if we do, and I'll do an example here in a minute to show you what, what we mean by that, but uh, basically, we take the lower of either 50% of eligible costs or the dollar per watt rebate and whichever is lower is the rebate that you could expect. Um, to clarify as well, this is a rebate program and not sort of a standard grant program. So the, the funding is delivered after the project has been completed, not on the front end. So if we have a look at this example, so the Medicine Hat Public School Division was one of the first schools to participate in our program a few years ago, or a couple of years ago, I guess, and they installed a 177.485 kilowatt DC array. So that's the system size that we would use to do our rebate calculation initially. Their total project cost for the project was $321,897.06. And so they fit into the dollar per watt rebate category of $1.10 per watt. So if we do that calculation, we would estimate that their rebate would be $195,233.50. But if we then take 50% of eligible costs, so 50% of that total project cost, we see that it's $160,948.53. or sorry, $160,948.53. So their rebate in that case would be that $160,948.53. So just to give you a sense of how we calculate those rebates. I'm going to mention the Calgary Board of Education here really briefly, talk about a few other things, and then we'll pass it on to uh, Elena and Sanjeev. Uh, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to steal their thunder, so I won't give you too many de details about these projects. But CBE has, they, they are expecting to receive $805,705 from the Action Centre in rebates for 11 different projects. They have completed already five different projects. So these are the smaller ones that, that you'll see on a number of different schools in the, in the images on the side. And they are currently have six larger projects in construction. One on is an expansion of one of these existing systems and the other five are, are new to those schools. So well, they'll dive into a, a few more of the details, but that's those are the CBE projects. Now, the question we get asked a lot <laughs> is how do we come up as a school authority or a school that's looking to participate in this program? How do we come up with that other 50 percent that, that the, the Solar for Schools program doesn't fund? So we've sort of done a little bit of research and, and come up with uh, a number of different ways that this can be achieved uh, with the help of Alberta Council for Environmental Education. They have a great list on their website of funding that's available for environmental projects for schools. Um, and we've we've also compiled this in communicating with the school authorities that have participated. And so, um, the, you know, this is what we're hearing from them as to how they've paid for the other 50%. So some of them are have paid for the other the other portion through internal school authority funds. So whether that's capital reserves, the capital maintenance and renewal, or the infrastructure funding that the school authority receives, um, those things can be eligible to be put towards a solar a solar energy array. Um, the announcement that was that came out in May from the government uh, for I believe it was the capital maintenance and renewal fund. Uh, we do have a school right now that's looking into using those funds as well to cover the other 50%. So if you're a school authority wondering about that, it might be worth looking into whether you can use those funds for that. Uh, Alberta Environment and Parks also offers uh, the Environmental Student Action Challenge, which provides up to $1,000, and that the deadline for that is September, October each year, and that's specifically for student-led projects. So if you're at a school that you know has some, some students that are interested in this, that's a good one to apply for. Um, Fortis, Alberta, if you're in the Fortis territory for wires, has a save energy grant, and that's anywhere between $1,000 and $5,000. They have a rolling intake, so you can check out the the Fortis website for more information on that. Inside Education offers their A plus for energy grant and that's up to $5,000 per project that can be applied um, for solar is one of the, the options um, that uh, that can be used there. And again, they have quite a bit of student, um, they, they require some student initiative in there as well. They, you need to have a project that's very student focused for sure. Uh, and their deadline is May of each year. 
The co-op offers the Community Spaces Grant, and that's anywhere between $25,000 to $150,000. So it's a it's one of the bigger grants. The deadline is the first business day in March each year. Now with that one, whoops, sorry. With that one, it is very much geared towards community spaces. So it would be a great option if you have, if you were, if a school authority was, or a school is looking to install maybe a solar gazebo as an outdoor classroom on their field and they were going to share that space with the community so that it would be built as an offering to the entire community it would be something that might be eligible for something like this so just keep that in mind with that one and then staples canada and earth day canada have joined forces and they offer the super the superpower your school contest and so they have twenty thousand dollars in green technology available uh, the deadline for that is january of each year so they would basically help fund a solar array through that program if you win. So it is a contest. You have to submit your project and then they select a winner each year. So the student education component. Um, this one uh, we've talked about a bit and I know Elena is going to get into what CBE has been doing for their, their schools, but we leave this reasonably flexible. We want schools and school authorities to do what works for them ultimately, uh, but ideally it's a hand on, hands on learning experience that integrates the technology into the classrooms and you know we we have a few different if people don't know where to start they're just not really sure how to how to integrate that into classroom learning we have a number of resources available on our website as well um, the alberta council for environmental education has some excellent resources inside education as well has climate change and energy education resources on their website and the people for energy and environmental literacy or peel uh, have free lesson plans available on their website site related to solar energy and climate change as well. So all of those resources are great places to start if you're looking for more information on integrating into curriculum. Now, how to participate. So the, the program is open for, uh, for rolling intake. We don't have a specific deadline every year. As I mentioned earlier, it is a first come first serve program. So we recommend that the first step be that you re review the book that's available on the website and the resources that we have available on our website as well. Uh, get quotes from multiple installers. So the Solar Solar Alberta uh, actually has a, a great directory of solar installers in the province that you can go through and select, um, you know, what region you're in and call around. And they actually also have an RFQ page where you can actually type in a bit of information about the project you're looking for, and then it sends it out to their membership. And so you can get responses that way, which is really handy. Um, and so once you've received quotes from multiple installers, they typically an installer will come and have a look at your your school or they'll do it virtually on Google Maps or something like that. And they'll be able to give you a really good sense of your your system size and what the, the general sense of what the cost is going to be. And once you have that information, um, e even before that, if you're interested, feel free to contact us. But to submit an expression of interest or an EOI, uh, we need a little bit of information about what the project is going to look like. So the expression of interest for us is a totally non-committal stage. We're happy to receive those at any time. You don't have to have fully decided that you're going to do the project yet. So we'll have a look and start walking you through the next steps once we receive that EOI. And then as you get closer and you've got your multiple quotes, you select your installer and submit an application. There are a number of different documents that have to come in with that application so you you definitely need to have decided to do the project and have signed a contract with a solar installer before you can submit your application so once that application submitted and we we've reviewed it and everything looks good then we'll send a funding agreement to the school authority for signing once that funding agreement is signed by both the school authority and the action center then that locks in the funding for the project from us for eight months so that allows time for the project to be completed and then project gets complete which is great <laughs> and at the end of that time frame the so, uh, completion documents get sent in and so there's a whole a whole uh, well a handful of documents that need to be submitted to us at the end of the project just to verify the size and the cost and uh, everything that uh, all the information we need to com confirm that the project is complete and then once we've received that and confirmed all of that, then the funding is sent. So one of the things that comes in as part of that completion package is proof that the system has been paid for as well. So the system does need to be paid up front and then the rebate is received after. So from there you receive funding and save energy and money as the years go forward. And all of that information as well is available in the guidebook that's on our website. So 
a few other resources that are available on our website as well and, and through our learning center are how to choose a solar contractor guide. So if you're unsure of where to even start, there's a, a checklist of things that you should be looking for when you're speaking to solar contractors. Um, if you are putting an RFP together as a school authority and you're not sure what to include, we have a checklist of best practices of things to include in an RFP checklist or in, an R, in a solar RFP, pardon me. Uh, there's also some more general information about solar PV basics. We have some case, a case study of Canadian Rockies public schools who has participated in our programs as well. So if you want some more information about a school authority that's participated in the projects that they did and what their experience is like, that case study is available. And then we have the Alberta Solar Calculator as well. So all resources that we have available if you're interested and haven't found them yet. So without further ado, I would love to introduce to you Elena Olofsson and Sanjeev Sharma from the Calgary Board of Education. Uh, Elena is a professional engineer who has worked at the Calgary Board of Education for over 10 years. Her role is to develop, promote and implement sustainability initiatives that involve and engage both internal and external stakeholders at CBE. She led the development of the Calgary Board of Education sustainability framework and was involved in the creation of the CBE waste management strategy and helped conduct the first ever CBE greenhouse gas inventory, which is quite a feat. Um, she looks forward to sharing the CBE solar, school, solar for Schools initiatives with all of you. Sanjeev Sharma is a prof also a professional engineer with a master's in electrical and computer engineering, specializing in energy and in the, and the environment from the University of Calgary. He's also a certified energy manager and has worked at the Calgary Board of Education for over five years. Sanjeev's role is to develop scope, uh, assess and implement energy and electrical projects and assist with mechanical and controls initiatives that involve both internal and external stakeholders at CBE. He leads the development and implementation of energy and engineering projects and design standards at CBE and focuses to reduce the greenhouse gas, their greenhouse gas emissions and to save the environment and also save precious dollars for the school authority. So I'm going to, sorry, this is this, this transition might take just a second here because I need to get their videos up. <laughs> so um, we're going to have Elena speak first. And without further ado, Alana, take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, so just to give you a sense of who we are as a school authority, um, we're the largest public school board in Western Canada. We have over 122,000 students, over 10,000 employees, all occupying over 250 schools and administrative sites. So that's a, over 10 million square feet of space that we manage. And that's, those schools range in age from over 100 years old to just opened last year. So we have quite a, a range of real estate that we manage. Um, next slide, please. And so as an organization at the board level, we set a few environmental policies. They are realized in our operational expectations. So how we operate our facilities and also in how we teach our students through our results. So sustainability is uh, represented at the very top at the board level. Next slide, please. And then that is further operationalized in our sustainability framework, where we set a goal of advancing student achievement in sustainability and being a leader in sustainable practices and behaviors. And you can find our sustainability targets in various areas, including um, built environment targets. Next slide, please. So our built environment targets talk about what we are trying to achieve in energy conservation, water conservation, waste reduction, and as well on how we reduce our dependency on fossil fuels through the incorporation of systems on schools. Next slide, please. So that 
stage and showed sort of the priority that we place at the CBE on sustainability initiatives and on reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. And so one way to do that is through um, installing PV arrays on our schools. And at the very start, so we've been working at this for 10 years. At the very start, these were school initiated projects. So schools came to facilities to say, we are super excited and really interested in installing solar on our schools. How can we go about doing this? And there, there was fundraising involved at the school level and at the facility project level, we helped them kind of through the procurement phase and through the installation and project management pieces. So it was really a whole system effort. And these initial projects were quite small. They were one kilowatt systems and mostly to show how PV systems work and how they um, generate electricity at the school site. And they were always coupled with an energy um, education component. And so these types of projects continued on through uh, the NMAX Jenny program. So those weren't only solar PV systems, but also some solar hot water systems and a wind turbine at one of our school sites. And then we also had a few school initiated projects in 2013, 14 and 16. So uh, the school demonstrated the desire. They did some fundraising at their level. Then there would be an assessment that was done on the facility to see if this project was viable. And then facility projects would help on the procurement and kind of the project management side. So that's that's sort of how for the last 10 years until our most recent group of projects um, that started with our Good Day Sunshine solar projects and I'm going to hand it off to my colleague to talk about group of projects. Elena, thanks for, uh, uh, you know, laying the groundwork for this. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so basically, Good Day Sunshine project uh, you know, uh, I believe in 2016 to take it away from the one kilowatts and lesser uh, systems that were being installed in the uh, at, at the school. So technically speaking, this was a giant leap because they were 10 times bigger than the earlier versions. So they were all 10 kilowatt systems and, uh, you know, schools were chosen based on their localities in, you know, we prefer to basically have uh, one in each quadrant, and that is how they were chosen. Uh, so there's a neat story behind the Good Day Sunshine, you know, how the name came about. There was a, a contest that was floated around uh, among the students, and they were asked to vote. And this is uh, Good Day Sunshine is what they chose as a name of the project. So it kind of, a, you know, allows the students basically to integrate into the thought process of the school as well as the board to ensure you know they are part of something bigger. So I think that is a neat idea and this is something that was floated uh, before my time and Olena was part of and which at the end of the day is about education and belongingness. So basically uh, 10 kilowatt systems were installed at five locations of you know they were producing uh, approximately 60 megawatt hours uh, of energy uh, per year of setting 38 tons we'll get into the carbon dioxide emissions a bit later on in terms of the you know what it means uh, from a global perspective so some of the funding for this project was provided by CBE and there was a, a bullfrog power uh, funding provided uh, i think it was in the range of 50 grand and on top of that and 1,500. And uh, the return on investment for something like this was approximately uh, 10 or 10 to 11 years. Next. 
Hi, Stephanie. Next slide, please. Yeah. Sorry. So the next uh, one of the other dimensions uh, of our solar uh, portfolio is STS, uh, Solar Force Schools, basically stands for Solar Technologies System Program, okay, uh, funded by basically Alberta government. Uh, most of the times it is uh, uh, allowed for uh, the modernization projects or basically the new school projects. We, uh, you know, and uh, the land funding for that is like 350 kilowatts. As uh, Stephanie just stated, uh, this program has been discontinued. So we're going to work with uh, MCCAC closely on to ensure how we can get other projects funded. Some of the recent uh, uh, completed projects are Lord Beaverbrook. Uh, they're all high schools. Uh, Joanne Cardinal Schubert basically is the newest high school we have, which just got completed, I believe, last week. And uh, a very different design. It has it had two phases. I'm going to discuss that more. James Waller is completed uh, in 2021. Uh, it ran into some snags, but we are working on that. So expectation is uh, it should be completed by 2021, and we should be able to avail uh, some uh, funding. Uh, from MCCAC. So uh, as a total, these systems are generating uh, 165, uh, 11, sorry, 1,165 uh, megawatt hours of uh, energy uh, per year and offsetting 745 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. The one school that uh, got missed in here is uh, Forest Lawn, which just got completed like two weeks ago, and that was also a part of the modernization and STS funding was approved for that. So I think that was in the range of 340 kilowatt system. Next slide, please. So MCC, MC, sorry, MCAC uh, Solar for School projects. Uh, we are working on uh, currently six solar uh, projects uh, right now. Uh, they are in construction as we speak. The total installed capacity is 920 kilowatt which is substantial with the biggest one being Central Memorial uh, at 300 kilowatt and uh, the rest three are basically 140 and two of them at, are at 100. So Senator Patrick Burns is the one and it ha earlier had a 10 kilowatt system. Now it is being upgraded to 100 kilowatt. So 920 kilowatt basically is a huge uh, uh, installed capacity as compared to what we had like 10 years ago. And part of it is uh, made available, uh, you know, uh, from the vision of the board and their uh, drive basically to uh, work towards a, sustainab a sustainability framework and implement the goals, uh, you know, put forward. And uh, obviously, there's a huge contribution coming in from MC MCCAC as well. Next slide, please. So this is uh, uh, the recently completed uh, Seton, uh, uh, jo uh, sorry, Joanne uh, Cardinal Schubert uh, High School uh, solar project. This is a uh, phase two of the project. This was done on the ground. Uh, most of the time, uh, the solar arrays are installed on the rooftop where nobody can see that. Well, good and bad both. I guess there are pros and cons. But I think uh, the design consultant did a really good job on this one, trying trying to visualize something on how this could be more effective. Uh, from a high level, it looks like a bus shelter, and uh, I think obviously it's going to provide the shade as well. But the thing is, it is in a full public view to ensure, um, you know, there is awareness in the society on what's going on or how we can basically. Uh, do better in the uh, with the environment. Uh, again, there are uh, pros and cons uh, on it uh, for it as, as well. Just before it was handed over, uh, there was a vandalism. One of the panels was broken, and uh, right now we are in uh, we are working to get this uh, vandal proof in some manner. So the consultant team is coming out with some options. Hopefully, we are going to implement that soon. Next one, please. So, this was a uh, general uh, discussion regarding what, what CBE is doing. Uh, let's look at some statistics over here. When we talk about the total installed capacity, obviously some of the projects are still in the works and they are uh, expected to be complete uh, by 2021. We, CBE will have a installed capacity of 2.2 megawatt total. 
So that translates into uh, basically 2814 megawatt hour of energy produced per year. So it's a big number, right? But again, if you look at uh, that perspective, this uh, energy basically saves CBE almost $168,000 or close to $169,000 uh, per year just on operational cost. So that is a big number looking at, uh, you know, the footprint of CBE and its substantial cost, which kind of uh, flows back into the system. Uh, for the recent 11 schools, the installed cost is approximately $1.65 million. Uh, and uh, grant funding from uh, MCCAC as well as other uh, sources uh, that was received, uh, including fundraising and uh, stuff like that, uh, amounted to approximately 900,000. So this is a meat basically of all the work we are doing. And based on all these numbers, their uh, approximate uh, return on investment is five years. Obviously, there, there was a bunch of funding and uh, sorry, uh, the rebates and the fundraising that was done, which uh, from by which we were able to bring the number uh, return on investment a bit down. Normally it's like seven to, uh, sorry, eight to 12 years. So based on these uh, power generation of 2.2 megawatt and uh, uh, yearly generation, CBE was able to offset 2,193 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. So what does that really mean? In a context, uh, you can assume you're driving on a deer foot and basically on a normal day. Now, these days are not normal days, actually. Um, on a normal day, uh, you know, all of a sudden you find going to a job, you do not have 430 vehicles on the road in front of you. You are not stuck in the traffic and that will not for one day for one year. So that's a big number. And you're offsetting that kind of uh, emissions for one year from 430 cars, well, you're going to save time, but at the end of the day, it's about the emissions as well. So just kind of a, trying to give you a perspective on that. Next one, please. And I think that is where I hand it over to my colleague, Olena. Thanks, Sanjeev. So the um, I'm just going to do a little intro to our next slide, which is actually a video. And I wanted to sh or we wanted to share with you some of the um, I guess the inspiration for the first MCCAC Solar for Schools project, uh, the partnership with CBE and MCCAC and Bullfrog Power. These were the students and staff at Senator Patrick Burns and their Environment Club and how they kind of got the ball rolling on reducing GHG at their school. Yeah. OK, and if you weren't able to hear it, um, the quick synopsis is is what this is an example of the amazing work that is done by staff and students across our system and how they engage in action against climate change and environmental stewardship. So this particular school used all of their refundables to fund green energy offsets purchased through Bull Bullfrog Power. So they um, offset the entire electricity footprint of their school year after year. And so that uh, initiative garnered interest from Bullfrog Power and through various talks and negotiations, Bullfrog Power um, agreed to provide a grant to the CBE in order to help install solar on not just Senator Patrick Burns, but five of our schools. So that was kind of how, how that project came about. And so those Students, I imagine, are still doing amazing work to uh, in action against climate change. Um, and so that really leads well into kind of the education piece, because that's sort of how we start, started in solar, is how do we connect to student learning? And over time, as the return on investment got better and better, there's also a uh, energy savings and cost savings component, but it also still comes back to student learning and how are we engaging 
our students in the energy generation data and just learning about renewable energy in general. And all of our schools are connected, all of our um, solar systems are connected through the SolarView energy portal. So all schools can see through an online web link how much energy they are generating through their solar panels. And they can also see other schools in the system and those schools and uh, commercial and institutional entities that are connected through SolarView across Canada um, can also see each other, those who choose to share. And so this is one way that schools can engage in the real-time data that is being collected. And then um, Stephanie, we have a coincident list in um, solar resources for schools and I particularly want to point out the shining a light on solar energy. So while we were going through the Good Day Sunshine Solar Project, the in, um, ELSE, the Emerging Leaders for Solar Energy and the Critical Thinking Consortium, they received a grant to develop lessons based on inquiry in order to provide lessons in the classroom based on uh, renewable energy and the data that was generated on top of the school. And so that uh, suite of lessons works really well with uh, the solar PV arrays that are being installed through the MCCAC pro program. Excuse me. And I also want to point out this, um, the graph is pretty small. I know on your screen, I tried to put a lot of information on this slide, but I really ex get excited about this BAMP Trail school graph because it shows uh, real-time circuit meter data showing the energy or the electricity use in the school overlaid with the uh, renewable energy generation by the solar panels on top of their school. So the red line is the electricity use and the green line is the um, renewable energy that is being generated by the solar panels and offsetting that electricity use in the school. It's a 10 kilowatt system, so it's not huge, but you can see that it makes a dent. And I think this is really neat to show staff and students how how that whole cycle of electricity and energy generation works. And this circuit meter installation and the accompanying materials, that was a school-based initiative. So all of these projects that you have seen right now, they are all partnerships with the school community and facility projects and then external partners like MCCAC in order to make these viable. Next slide. And that's a thank you for uh, from us and I'll hand it back to Stephanie and then I guess we'll answer questions. You bet. Thanks, Elena. And I, I'm wondering if the technical issues are on my end because things, things seem to be very slow for me. I'm trying to get my video up, but I'm not sure it's going to it's not it's not cooperating so we'll see but uh so we leave some time for questions i'm just going to zip through this piece but this is just an example of the other programs that we have available through the municipal climate change action center um these programs are primarily focused for municipalities. The Solar for Schools program is the only program that we offer that's specific to school authorities. But uh, I know we've got lots of different people attending today. So if you want more information on these programs, feel free to head to our website at mccac.ca uh, and have a look through. There's good descriptions of all the programs and contact information as well. Um, you're more than welcome to reach out to any of us for further information and if you have any questions. So without further ado, we're going to get to some of our questions. I'm going to turn my video off here. And sorry, it's the bonus of speaking and trying to manage the webinar at the same time. Here we go. <laughs> we'll send this live uh, and I will start reading out some of the questions we've received. So uh, the first one 
that we've gotten uh, and the one that's been upvoted. So we'll, uh, okay. So does the CBE have targets past the 2020 marker such as net zero by 2030? So I'll answer that one. Um, we are currently working towards our, I know it's already December 2020, but we're sort of wrapping up our 2020 targets and we are looking at all of the targets that are happening municipally and federally and provincially and across the globe around how to reduce GHG emissions, what are the climate mitigation and climate adaptation related targets and we'll be aligning ourselves to those targets and developing our next version of our sustainability plan over the next year. So I hope to say yes, but um, we still haven't done all of that searching and aligning. So TBD, stay tuned. <laughs> Great, thanks Elena. Uh, next question is, can you tell us more about the grant from Bullfrog? I know that wasn't on, it wasn't on my funding list, so that's, I'd love to hear more too. <laughs> Yeah, so as I mentioned in kind of the post video explanation, um, that grant came as a result of the work that Senator Patrick Burns did around their fundraising for green energy credits. So through that work and getting that attention from Bullfrog Power, Bullfrog Power decided to use some of their community giving grant money to the CBE to fund not only solar on Senator Patrick Burns, but on four other schools to make it a five school project. Great, thanks. Uh, the next question is, how did the CBE decide which schools would receive funding for solar PV projects? Do you want to take that one, Sanjeev, or do you want me to? Yeah, no, you can go ahead. I'm having okay. struggles with my computer right now. Okay. Yeah, so to, in the past, a school has demonstrated desire and interest by kind of fundraising a portion of the cost. And so they would apply to grants or, or different programs. And typically it was the A plus for energy program. And they would say that we really want solar on our schools because we want to teach our students about energy and solar and they would come to facility projects with that funding and then there would be sort of a facilities piece that would follow to make sure that the building was actually a viable location for installation and then the partnership would ensue so it was both school desire and then school building viability that would decide where that that system would go Thanks, Elena. Uh, next one is, could CBE please go through the details and how they arrived at the five-year payback? I think it was a five-year ROI was the, was the uh, figure. Yes, that was correct. Uh, I'll answer that, Elena. So based yeah. on, yeah, based, the only thing is it was, there were all the grants uh, uh, we received and the fundraising that was done along with the MCCAC uh, initiative uh, for the funding. That is how basically we got those numbers. Now, when we talk about the power generation, obviously we had a bunch of uh, smaller systems. They were also taken into account, uh, you know, but when we are talking about the money spent, uh, 1.65 million, that was for the last 11 schools. So if you are going to ignore the other um, bits and pieces in there for, for the smaller uh, solar installs, it comes around to be uh, approximately five years. But normally, if the, you know the level of funding, if you are only looking at the funding from MCCAC, it probably is uh, around 10 to 12 year mark. Great, thanks Sanjeev. Um, and I am also having computer issues and can't, uh, my Q&A has just disappeared on me, which is not very helpful. Um, I, I know one of the, the next questions from when I was reading was about how big a solar array would be needed for a small school, a K-6 school of about 300 students. 
Um, so that's something that uh, it's going to be very dependent on the building itself and your electricity use over over the course of a year. So it's not something that I can sort of say, you know, you would probably need this size of array, but feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, I'm, I am at sripley at mccac.ca or you, you can just contact the general contact link as well and you'll be directed to me um, it, with a little bit more information about your school and I can try and help you guide, try and help guide you through that. Um, that's something too that if you reach out to, if you are interested and you reach out to a few solar installers, they'll be able to help you size a system system that would work for your school and for your energy needs. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get back to the Q&A here and my. <laughs> it is the day of technical difficulties. <laughs> um, I am. My window is just not letting me see this, so I'm going to go to the next slide here and see if this. We're just about at the very end. I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen and hope that maybe that helps. No, I think we might just have to end it and I'm very sorry to the person. I know there was one other question and there may have been others that come that have come in. I, ha I can't see them right now, so I will try and reach out to you afterwards and uh, send any questions for CBE their way and hopefully we can respond to them via email because uh, I'm I am unfortunately unable to see the questions right now, but uh, thank you all for joining us today and uh, please feel free to reach out to uh, Olena uh, Sanjeev or myself if you have further questions and uh, we hope to see some applications and expressions of interest coming our way uh, and just reach out if you have any other questions as well. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.